Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use a seemingly small feature that is being added in .NET 7 that actually probably unintentionally completely opens the door to build awesome APIs in .NET on top of minimal APIs using Mediator. So in this video I'm going to show you how we can wire all that up and build really really nice APIs that are very testable and scalable. If you like the most content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsis.com. All right, so what do I have here? So I have a completely empty .NET 7 project. So if I go here and I show you, I have no dependencies, I have nothing. It is just a web project that is .NET 7. And in the program.cs, I just have the three basic lines that you need to have an API. Now, just as a very quick refresher, if you want to build like a minimal API, just a simple endpoint in ASP.NET Core since .NET 7, all you can say is map get example, and then you can have, let's say, a parameter here, so age, and this will come from your query string parameters in this case, but you can specify this to come from different places as well. You can say from route, from body, from different other things, but the default is query if you don't specify it. And then you can say return results, okay, and return something that says, for example, message equals the age was, and then you can pass down the age over here. And that's it. And I can now just run this API. And if I go on Postman and say example, and then say age equals just an age, then I'm getting the response back because the query string is mapped here. If this was nullable, then it would be optional. I covered all this in detail in other videos. Now, what I would always want to do, and one of the biggest problems I have with this default approach is, even though it's very simple, it is not testable by default. You can't just, without extracting this somewhere, have it be easily testable. And it's also very weird for people to know where to put this handler because do you just leave everything in here? Do you extract it? Then if you extract it, everything is static. And how do you deal with scopes? And yes, there can be parameters here, but how do I know if the parameter is coming from where? And it all gets very, very complicated very easily for someone, even though the starting point is simple, where to move things and how to structure them very easily isn't really obvious. And this is where a brand new attribute added in .NET 7 called as parameters over here. This one completely changes the game. Basically, this is what this thing does. I can have a class and I can say example request here. And effectively, what this allows me to do is encapsulate all the parameters of a single request into a single object. So now for this thing, I can say int age here. And instead of having all those parameters here, I can just say this. And if I want to get the age, I can get the age from here. If this had the route parameter, so if it had, I don't know, maybe name over here, then I can go ahead and I can add the name and it will know that this name is coming from the route. And now I can say the age was this and the name was, and I can get the name from the request. Here we go. And this is the age. And if I run that now, because I have this as parameters, it will know how to map that. And if I go back to Postman and say, um, Nick, and then 860, the age was 60, and the name was Nick. So all of that now works, and I can have that single object that defines my incoming contract in a way. Now, this new attribute and this approach actually gave me an idea, because I personally like to have a way to mediate to a handler my request and let that handler deal with a request. And you've seen me show fast endpoints in the past or extracting these handlers to their own classes, but ideally I'd want a very simple way to just say, here's the example request, find the handler that deals with it and then give me back the response and that's it. Well, now we can do it and we can do it in a very, very clean and elegant way. I really, really like this. And it all starts with Mediator. So I'm going to go ahead and add the dependency injection package of Mediator. If you don't know what Mediator is, I do have a video, I actually have a bunch of videos on it. So I highly recommend you check those first before you continue. But if you know what it is, and most people do at this point, then please follow along. Now, before I show you the code, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Octopus Deploy. Octopus Deploy is an automated deployment and release management tool used by leading continuous delivery teams worldwide. It helps DevOps teams at over 25,000 companies accelerate reliable, repeatable, 
and traceable deployments across different cloud providers and on-premises infrastructures. With more than 500 different automation step templates and integrations with hundreds of technologies like Azure, AWS, GCP, Azure DevOps, and way, way more, connecting your processes together into one pipeline has never been easier. It's actually what I've personally been using for the past five years in my last two jobs, working with microservices in both major cloud providers to manage my deployments and build simple but also complex CD pipelines, and I've been extremely happy with it. It was actually the only DevOps tool over the past five years that was never changed for a different tool because nobody had a problem with it. It does what it needs to do and it does it well and reliably. So if you want to get started with Octopus Deploy, check the link in the description. And thanks again so much to Octopus Deploy for sponsoring the video. So now I have Mediator and what I want is to turn these HTTP requests to Mediator requests that find their way into a Mediator handler, which returns the request response. Now, if you've only used Mediator with clean architecture, wipe your brain for the next few minutes, because Mediator is not a one trick point. It doesn't just do that thing you're using it for. It can be used for multiple things. And this is one of them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a bunch of folders. So first I'm going to create a handlers folder, and then I'm going to create a request Folder. And this is where I'm going to put all the requests, for example, this example request over here. So I'm going to create a class for that. Now in Mediator, normally you would have an I request with the request response approach. And then here you would define your response. What I want to do instead is I want to create my own request. So I'm going to say I HTTP request. This is my own interface. And this interface is what every single request that I will have that uses this approach will implement. So this will be an I request that returns an I result, which is what uh, minimal APIs accept as a response. So now with that, I can say that this example request implements the IHTP request. That IHTP request doesn't have any parameters and doesn't need to. We just want to safeguard against the return type so all of our handlers return the same thing. And now that I have that, I can make my handler. And my handler will be the example handler over here. And this will implement the I request handler, which accepts the example request and returns an I result. Pretty straightforward. And then all of my things regarding the request will be in the request object. So age and name are here. I could technically still inject services through the request, but my recommendation would be to use normal dependency injection from the constructor because Mediator actually supports that. And you're going to see how we're going to wire that up now. So we have the response and I can say here, just as a quick thing, results dot okay. And actually let me just copy the same thing because I'm lazy. So this goes here. And I'm going to have um, a fake await as well. So I'm going to add await async just to show that this thing is doing some work. I don't need to have that, but I can have it. And there's full cancellation token support as well. So might as well pass it down. And I no longer need all of that. Instead, I'm going to add my own extensions. So I'm going to create a new class to put my extensions in. So minimal minimalator, <laughs> it's a stupid name, extensions. Here we go and make that uh, static. And then I'm going to have a single method for now. I'm going to say static web application to return that web application so we can chain requests and say mediate get. And that mediate get will have a T request generic parameter. And then I'm going to have this web application app because we're extending the web application and then string template. And that is a request name template. Now we need to constrain that T request to be an I HTTP request, which ensures that it will always return that I result that I need in my handlers. And now watch how simple that as parameters attribute makes this implementation. All I need to say is app.map get, pass down the template, and then say async I mediator mediator, and then as parameters and T request, which I know implements that I HTTP request, and then just say await mediator dot send that request. And that's it. And then I just return app and I'm done. And if I want to have any other implementation, so mediate post, for example, it is literally the exact same thing. Just the map get changes to a map post. The parameters are exactly the same. And now all I need to do to register that endpoint is actually to say app dot mediate get with that object I just created and then pass down 
the example endpoint and say name because the name is a route parameter. And then of course, I also need to register mediator itself. So I'm going to say uh, services dot add mediator. And I actually need to register mediator as scoped here because the request itself is scoped. So it will be a good practice for mediator to respect the scope of the request itself. And I'm also going to pass down the uh, type of the program.cs. So it registers all the handlers. And once I have that, I can just run this. I'm going to also put a breakpoint over here in the handlers just so you can see how it is being debugged. And then I call that. And as you can see, request is mapped with age and name correctly map. So if I just run that, I'm getting the response I want just like that. And the process of adding new endpoints is creating a new handler, creating a new request, and then mapping it in the program.cs. And you can even make that by convention, but I like how it is explicit like this here. But you could technically extract that and actually end up having like an attribute here be like HTTP get and then make it registered automatically by convention. It really comes down to what you want to do. And just to show you how resolving a service would work on this, I'm going to go here and create a new directory called services. And I'm going to add a new GUID service, which just has a property called ID. And I'm going to do that just to show you the, the scoped approach that I just explained a second ago. So I have that. I'm going to say builder.services.add scoped and I'm going to add the GUID service over here. And now I'm going to inject that service in two ways. First, like I said before, you could technically do this. You can say GUID service. I do not recommend this. What I do recommend is to actually just inject it from the constructor of the mediator handler. This is fully supported, but just to show you that they will return the same value because the scoped scope is respected, I'm going to say request GUID equals request dot GUID service dot ID. And then GUID service dot ID is the constructor GUID equals that. So I'm going to go ahead and run that and see what that returns on Postman. And as you can see, they return the exact same GUID. That's because the scope is respected for both services because it's the same scope. It is the same instance of the service. And now just to show you how easy it is to add a new handler, I'm going to create a weather service which has the out of the box weather service logic that ASP.NET Core applications come out with. So this is the implementation and this is the weather forecast. And I also added a city parameter just so we can have both the route and the days, which is a query string parameter. Now, first we're going to register that service, add Singleton, it doesn't need to be scoped in our case. So whether service goes here and then step one is create a new request. So whether request goes here, like I said, I HTTP request and it needs to have two things. First string city name and then int days, how many days far ahead you want the forecast for. And then I'm going to go ahead here and say weather forecast handler. And I'm going to implement the I request handler for the weather request. And then the response is I result. I'm going to go here, implement that. I'm going to inject the private read only, like I said before, weather service. If you want this to be testable, you can also create an interface for this weather service so you can mock it. And this approach lends itself very nicely to testing because you just instantiate the handler itself. And then you can say forecast equals await because now we can await as well. This is asynchronous weather service dot get get weather for city city and then request dot days and then return results dot okay focus and that's it that's how easy it is i'm gonna go here i'm gonna say app dot mediate get weather forecast and then say weather and city let's see why that method doesn't like it well that is clearly the wrong object that should be weather request here we go but that's it. We have the handler, we have the request, we have everything we need. And I'm going to go ahead and run this now. And I'm going to call that brand new endpoint. Here we go. And I'm going to get the weather for London for one day in the future. And here you go. If I say two now, then I'm getting it. Here you go. 
and I can change it for as many as I want in a very nice, simple way. And in my opinion, this is a great approach because all you need is that request that is very explicit in what it requires from you, then that handler, which you can see which services you're injecting, and then what the object needs, and then you return the I result directly, which is being translated. Now, if you don't want to have your effectively API responsibility, this I result couple in this level, then you can make a mapper on top of it. In my opinion, there's no point because at some point you can have the mapping anyway, and then you can just put your logic and implement whatever you want here in a very nice way. It's also a very sync responsibility approach because you have one handler for one endpoint doing one very explicit thing. I really, really like this. You're going to find the link for the source code down below. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like. If you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.